Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending on where in the world you're logging in from. Thank you so much for joining us today from near and far. We have a fun and informative session for you today with a special sample lecture um, led by one of our wonderful professors, Professor Jean Mu Lee today. Uh, before we dive into things today, why don't we start by the line acknowledgement? I would first like to acknowledge that UBC's Vancouver Point Grey campus is situated on the traditional ancestral unceded territory of the Musqueam people. I would also like to acknowledge that you are joining us today from many places near and far and acknowledge tradi the traditional owners and caretakers of those lands. Our agenda for today, I'm going to start off with some introductions. We'll do a quick overview of the Master's in Business Analytics program. We'll have a little bit of time for some admissions related questions, but of course, you can always reach out to me directly if you have additional questions or need additional guidance. And then uh, we'll get into the part that you guys all really logged in for today, which is our sample lecture. We'll also have time towards the end for some Q&A. So if you've got some special questions uh, from our guest lecturer, you'll be able to uh, leverage that time to ask your questions then as well. Who is in the room today? I'll start off by introducing myself. I'm Natalie Sarestrophil, and I'm an admissions and recruitment manager, and I oversee the Master's in Business Analytics program. And I'm joined by two of my peers from our marketing team. They are essentially the magic behind the scenes and also very knowledgeable on our program. So if you have any questions, they can also be of great help and support for you. And last, but of course not least, I'd like to introduce our very special guest today. We have Associate Professor Jean Lee. Jean Mu Lee is an Associate Professor of Information Systems at the UBC Sauter School of Business and the Director of Data Analytics and AI Research Group at UBC. He teaches courses for the UBC MBAN program, the Masters in Management, and our specialty program here, the Masters of Business Administration at the Robert H. Lee Graduate School. He's also worked in a variety of different industries and positions in companies such as Samsung Electronics, AT&T, Intel, and Goldman Sachs, amongst many others. Professor Lee is going to be giving an informative and engaging lecture in just a few moments on the topic of artificial intelligence and business analytics. Thank you so much, Professor, for being with us today. It's truly an honor and a privilege. He's giving a little wave. <laughs> So thank you, we'll, we'll, we'll get into that portion of things um, shortly. Uh, but before that, I'd like to um, just uh, give a little uh, insight into the Zoom best practices. So today you'll be able to ask any questions you have during the question and answer components. And throughout the session, you can definitely type out um, your questions in the chat panel. Um, and uh, when we're, we're live taking questions, you can definitely use the raise your hand feature and, and, and we'll get to you. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about the Masters in Business Analytics program. So let's dive right in. Analytics and the popularity of the NBAN continues to grow because more and more organizations realize the importance of this skill set in the face of uncertainty and unprecedented times. I think we've had our, our fair share of those in the past few years and, and are currently having that as well. But really, the need for analytics really continues to grow um, across organizations, across different departments, industries, and of course, internationally. And uh, the MBAN really gives you a skill set that allows you to help organizations and individuals become more adaptive in the face of changing times. It's, it's really a skill set that enables you to speak the language of business data and technology. Currently, UBC Sauter's MBAN program is ranked as the top BA program in Western Canada. This is really a one-of-a-kind program for anyone who wants to work with sound data-driven decision-making and of course become an effective storyteller using data and really to be there to help support organizations make sound decisions, make better decisions at the end of the day. So why UBC Solder? Why the MBAN at UBC Solder? I, I get asked this question pretty often 
And when I get asked this question, there's a few key themes that come to mind. Well, first, of course, there's the engaging courses and curriculum, the case studies that you'll be working with, but also there's the analytics consulting internship, which takes place at the end of the program, and that's an instrumental piece of the program. There's also the experiential learning piece and the personalized career development and coaching that you get that's a very powerful part of the program, and it's what helps differentiate us and help set our students up for success on their career paths. This is the program at a snapshot. So the program is, is 12 months. You'll see that when you're looking at the courses specifically, that each course really has within it um, that intersection between the technical side of things where you're learning a lot of theoretical components and, and, um, and more quantitative areas potentially, but then you've got that business lens that you're coming at things with. So you're learning how to apply these concepts in real life and in real time because you're working with real life examples. Our employer partnerships are providing us with real problems in real time using real data sets so that you can be working on real life problems essentially and helping solve problems as you learn. So you're learning about things like data-driven marketing, forecasting, predict uh, predictive and prescriptive analytics, consulting practices, how to effectively be a technical project manager in the works. Essentially, you learn how to communicate with different stakeholders, and that's a very powerful skill set to have in, in today's uh, economy. So at the end of the day, you're, you've got the strong technical skills while also having the strong business and storytelling skills so that you can work with diverse perspective and on complex projects. Generally, your peers in the classroom are coming from a variety of different backgrounds, different industries, and they're also going into different industries as well a lot of the times. And they're working in job titles such as business analyst, financial analyst, technical project manager, business intelligence associated, associate, just to name a few. And like I said, career development programming is, is a big part of a, the program and it's embedded within the curriculum. So starting day one, you are gaining all of these great resources and this training to help make you more and more career ready so that you're set up for success uh, in the job market. So whether that means building your own personal brand, building your CV, getting interview ready, we have a designated team of resources and support to help make sure that you're set up for success and on your way um, to reaching your goals. And that includes having your own personal um, career coach as well, access to a network of alumni, a mentor network, access to industry partners, company info sessions, the list really just goes on. And um, we really also help harness everyone's strength and support them towards developing their areas for development. We're, we're huge advocates for, for building um, personal self-awareness and empowering you to, to grow into the best version of yourself at the university. Uh, you also get to participate in an analytics consulting internship and that's your opportunity to get those real life hands on experience in the field of analytics before you graduate. There's hackathons that you'll get to participate in, lots of real life data that you're working with, and um, all the concepts that you're working on are, are practical and, um, and relevant to, to real life business problems. As I'm sure you might have guessed by now, the, the program's offered right here in the, in the heart of Vancouver, where myself and my team are, are logging in from in British, beautiful British Columbia. Um, and the university is right in the heart of Vancouver. And Vancouver, besides being a beautiful and very livable um, city um, internationally, being recognized as such, it's also the country's fastest growing economy. And we're also emerging in a variety of different industries. Of course, tech is a big one here and, and one that we're very well known for. Uh, but beyond that, entrepreneurship is thriving here. Natural resources, healthcare, transportation, manufacturing, oil and gas, you name it. Lots of growing industries here. And it's also home to a variety of consulting firms, 500, Fortune 500 companies and startups. Um, 
some names that you might be familiar with are McKinsey, SAP, Microsoft, Amazon, Lululemon. You can find all of those here as well. Looking at our admissions requirements, uh, we do have a very holistic uh, evaluation process when we're making any kind of admissions related decisions. So we look at the full person when we're making any kind of admissions related decisions. Of course, uh, we do look at academic achievement and how you may have performed on those standardized tests, the GMAT jury. That's due to the academic rigor of the program. We do need to make sure that your quantitative skills are strong. So we are looking at your previous courses in topics such as math, stats, calculus, or algebra. Although work experience is not a requirement for a program, it's definitely something that you can use to leverage to help you stand out as a, as a successful candidate for the program. Um, we're looking at your, your references. We, we accept either professional or academic. We do have a, a strong, a, a little bit of a preference towards professional just because typically they could speak more accurately to your your performance on, on the job and what it's like to work with you, your your personality, your attitude, your work style. And of course, we do also have some written and video essay components along with the the application. I mean, when, when people think uh, video essay, they, they sometimes get intimidated by the concept. Um, we're not expecting a big production here. Here, we're really looking for something similar to a, a job interview you might have been on. So here again, we're looking to get a feel for your personality, who you are, your fit, and your level of maturity and your professionalism. So treat it like you would a job interview. And uh, an English proficiency test. This is only required if you studied at an academic institution where the primary language of instruction was not English. So if you studied at a university um, outside of Canada where the even the primary language of instruction was English, uh, you would be exempt from having to take that exam. So if you tick up all these boxes in terms of the admissions requirement, then the last stage would be your personal interview. And if you've made it to this stage, um, you know, you're close to the finish line. So, so congratulations on, on making it there. Currently, we have a GRE GMAT waiver in place. So I really encourage you to review the eligibility criteria on our website. You essentially have to meet one of three criteria to be considered as exempt from having to take the GMAT or GRE. And along with your application, if you wish to apply for this waiver, you will have to submit a statement of qualifications. This is essentially just like a one pager where you're explaining how and why you feel like you should be considered as exempt from this waiver based on meeting our criteria. Keep in mind that deadline is coming up pretty fast for our international student on January 10th. So make sure you're, you're taking advantage of um, this opportunity if you do meet our criteria. January 10th also happens to be our next deadline. And it's uh, a deadline that is attached to a lot of scholarships as well. So make sure you're leveraging our wonderful scholarship opportunities as well by getting to that submission line uh, sooner rather than later. Um, yes, so mm -hmm. January 10th, that's our next big important deadline. Make sure you're getting your applications submitted before then and that you're leveraging myself and my team uh, for support and resources in the weeks to come. So now I'd like to open a, a few moments up to some admissions related questions before we hand things over to our, our special guest today. Uh, do we have any admissions related questions? So I have a question about admissions and if it happens on a rolling basis. Yes, admissions happens on a rolling basis. We don't wait until a deadline to review applications or, or give insights and information on your application or your admission status. So we do encourage you to apply um, and submit your application as, as, as soon as you can, just because that really amplifies your opportunities of, of getting scholarships. And of course, the sooner you apply, the sooner you know if you know, you've know you made it into the program or you've been admitted. So it, it's a win-win either way. The sooner you apply, the better. I have a question about the GMAT and GRE and whether it's a requirement for domestic students as well. So the answer to that question is yes, it is a requirement, um, even if you're a domestic student, um, but you may be considered as exempt if you meet our uh, admissions criteria for a, a GMAT or GRE waiver. So definitely take that time to go on our website and, and look 
at whether or not you meet the eligibility criteria for a waiver. And I think that would be um, the best way to approach that. Uh, the reason we do require a GMAT or jury for this program specifically is because of the rigor involved in the program. Uh, I'm not trying to scare anyone, but I also don't want to sugarcoat things. It, it is an academically rigorous program and we need to be responsible and ensure that um, our students can keep up with that pace. And uh, the program does tend to attract a type of student that does like that level of, uh, I guess, challenge within the program. So I'm just giving a heads up on that. <laughs> Thank you for that question. It looks like those seem to be the most pressing questions thus far. I will put my email address in the chat box so that you can get in touch with me directly if you want to book a coffee chat or if you have any program related questions. Um, but without further ado, I'd like to turn things over to our special guest today, Professor Jean Mu Lee, who is going to be presenting on the topic of AI and business analytics. So thank you so much, Professor, for being here with us today. Over to you. Thank you, Natalie, for having me today. All right, so thank you everyone for being with us today uh, in my guest uh, lecture today, sample lecture today. Again, my name is Jean Lee. I'm very happy that I can share a bit of my lecture to you. Uh, and then maybe I'll see you in the classroom <laughs> next year. So today I'm gonna to talk about artificial intelligence, how we can use it in business analytics. So I'll actually st start with some story here. Um, so this is a picture I took uh, many years ago when I did my first internship uh, at Goldman Sachs. So left hand side, this is the New York Stock Exchange where you know a lot of people trade stocks in the finance industry. And then uh, on the right hand side, this is the Goldman Sachs building uh, for, uh, for IT and technology analytics team. So the whole building is, is dedicated to Goldman Sachs um, uh, on tech technology and analytics team. So back in the day, they said, said that about one third of the employees are technical background people. So now I, I'd like to um, share another story. Uh, this is a, uh, a 2017 article. Uh, there was an interview and there's a, um, about Goldman Sachs recently. And then uh, there used to be uh, 600 traders in those New York Stock Exchange other financial uh, services, but they decided to uh, eliminate most of them. Only two are left at the trader uh, stage. And then instead they hire 200 computer engineers to replace their jobs. So you can essentially see that technology analytics is really shaking the industry, financial industry here. Uh, down below, these are two charts that shows first on the left-hand side, the medium income level of people over the years. And you can see that uh, the, the purple line is the medium income and the, the, uh, the green line uh, is, is the productivity level. So you can see that uh, in the last few decades, uh, the, um, thanks to technology, the productivity has gained a lot. And also you can see on the right hand side, um, a lot of clerical jobs are decreasing where our professional jobs are increasing. I guess you all uh, are well aware of this, so that's you're interested in the MBAM program. So these technology uh, revolutions are uh, happening because of what we call general purpose technology. So GPT is any technology that affects the whole in industry, entire uh, industry, uh, economy, and the global and also national scale. So you can think of a lot of different um, uh, GPTs such as um, electricity, electronics, cars, uh, EV is changing our in a lot of industries now and computer, of course, internet AI are GPTs. So people call uh, nowadays as uh, the fourth industrial revolution. Uh, this is a, an art article from uh, the World Economy Forum uh, basically saying that um, because uh, every new generation of GPT, there is a new revolution. So the third revolution was actually the IT industry revolution because of electronics and IT systems. But what was happening nowadays is that these IT systems are impacting the real world. So that's why we think that um, this new revolution is, is a significant change nowadays. Uh, another article uh, by Mark Andreessen. Uh, Andreessen Horowitz is a very um, successful venture capital firm uh, who actually in, um, uh, invested in Airbnb and Lyft early on, also Facebook, uh, LinkedIn also. So they claim that the software is eating the world. So this is what's what's happening now. And, and you may ask a question, uh, why these revolutions and changes are happening nowadays, right? So the question, 
can be answered with two uh, different um, factors. The first one is the large data, big data set. So traditionally, the data set were sitting in, in the silo in corporates or government databases. But as we, as we have, are witnessing nowadays uh, with the invent of social media, mobile devices, and IoT systems, so we're seeing increase amount of data uh, that's happening. So in terms of data, we talk about five Vs, uh, volume, vol velocity, veracity, value, et cetera. So I want to really focus in here on the variety aspect of data. So you can, you can think about your daily life, um, what kind of data you are producing. So if you're using social media, you're in, um, you're, you have your textual data, your image data, so if you're watching YouTube video on Netflix, you have a lot of video data. Also this online lecture is also kind of video data. So a lot of different kinds of data is introduced to the industry. So how we can analyze those uh, news type of data set, that's a big question. The second factor of this revolution is the analytics, the technology, the com computational aspect of it. So one side you have the large data set, the other side you have a very powerful computer. So um, the computer has been there for decades also. The thing is that um, there is a, this um, law called Moore's law. So its claim is that every one and a half year, the computation power is doubling. It's not linear increasing, but it's, also, it's exponentially increasing. Um, you can think of your smartphone now, actually, if you bring that back many decades ago, people will think this is a supercomputer. So with the big data and also you have uh, computation power, we are seeing this revolution. So the agenda for today, uh, for the rest of the remainder of the talk, I wanna talk about uh, the, the, some definition of analytics and why we need AI. I want to give you some AI analytics project samples. And finally, I will conclude to, uh, to introduce what you will learn in our MBAN program. So what is analytics? So I wanna give you some examples first before we dive into the definition. So I mentioned that I work at, at the Goldman Sachs. This is many years ago. So they um, they have this home trading system. Uh, they generate a lot of data sets. So they have a lot of um, data on people's trades and their activities on, uh, online. They wanted to put them together in a real-time monitoring system. So back in the day, we didn't call it really business analytics, but now if I uh, think back, this was uh, one of my first analytics projects. Um, the second project I wanted to introduce, so Natalie introduced that I work with different companies, right? So this is another firm I work with, uh, AT&T. So this was when iPhone 4 was introduced to the market. So this is many years ago again. So iPhone 3 and 4, there's like major difference, which is the uh, App Store. So because of the app, uh, the app open app platform, there are a lot of like third party developers putting in their apps into the platform. Because of that, there are like high demands in the network. Uh, however, AT&T and a lot of network providers were not really ready for that. So because of that, there are a lot of call drops and like slow internet connectivity. So people will people were uh, quite frustrated with that. So the project I work on at AT&T was that, so um, we wanted to really understand why people are complaining about th these services. And um, at the, Around the same time, social media was also introduced. So we collected a lot, large amount of data on AT&T service and Twitter using the API service. And then we run some textual analysis such as sentiment analysis to see what are some positive um, comments, what are the negative ones. Okay, so once we know like these are the negative comments, we can also understand the keywords inside. So you can see some examples here. So this was an incident in Miami, Florida. So there was an outage and people talk about this outage in Twitter uh, space. So this is what's, what's one of my first um, actually more at cutting edge, I would say, text analytics project. So analytics is really about gathering the data from internal resources, but also external data. You integrate and then you analyze it to get insights. So the business analytics, our MBAM program is unique in that it's not just uh, teaching you about how to process the data, but I think the fourth and fifth aspect here is very important, which is to communicate your insights to the management team. So because you will have managerial courses as well as technical courses, you will have this unique aspect to bridge uh, these two different worlds. So um, Natalie has uh, introduced our MBAM um, different programs 
And so there's di different types of analytics. And uh, here I am introducing three of them. So descriptive analytics, predictive and prescriptive analytics. So let's try to un understand what, how they are different. So the first step of analytics is really to gather the data and then understand the history. So which is descriptive analytics. So what happened? So by understanding your transactions in your e-commerce website, for example, you know which products were selling well, which one were not. So these are descriptive analytics, trying to understand the history. Once you understand the history, you can also predict your future. So let's say um, you build your machine learning model to predict. So how, for, I'm giving you an example here. If I change my price, uh, will increase by 10% will be the impact of my sales. By um, gathering your historical data and then training your machine learning model, you can make predictions. So this is predicted analytics. So in our NBAM program, you will have some descriptive predictive analytics course. Um, finally, once you can predict your future, um, the natural question will be, what will be our optimal choice of action, right? So what will be our optimal price point of how much, um, how can we optimize that strategy? So which is a prescriptive analytics. So these are the three different types of analytics you will learn uh, throughout NBAM program. So I want to um, switch the topic a little bit. Uh, I want to emphasize the AI aspect in business analytics. So when, uh, when I talked about the data, different types of data, the variety of data set. So, so this chart showing you, uh, this is the advertising ad spending uh, in the internet services. So the search ad is still very number one. Search, you can think about this as a textual data, right? And so social display, social media uh, ad is the second. So social media, uh, you have Instagram photos, you have YouTube videos. These are all um, imager data, right? Unstructured data. So, so this unstructured data is actually the majority of the data sets being generated in the world, in the industry. Um, so the question is, how can we really understand this unstructured data? text, photo, sound, video. So traditional uh, analytics approach, that doesn't really work uh, because they are tailored towards usually this structured data, numeric number numbers, right? Uh, so AI is really needed to really understand this unstructured data set. So giving you a little uh, a definition of AI, so it's a capability to correctly interpret, interpret external data, learn from it and making I use those learnings to, uh, to achieve certain goals and tasks. So AI is a pretty broad term. So I'd like to uh, dive into some more um, examples, some subfields of AI. So if you have um, Facebook photo, for example, you are using computer vision algorithm to understand what kind of objects are in there uh, or a face detection, like who are in there. So these are called computer vision algorithms. Um, so I'm doing some research on TikTok videos and then TikTok, you have a lot of these uh, speeches, right? So we try to understand this, uh, this audio auditory information using speech recognition. Um, the example of uh, Twitter analysis, you need to understand the tweet text, right? So this textual data, you need, the computer needs to read it. It's called natural language processing. And um, for the predictive analytics, we need to use uh, machine learning. So there are many AI subfields that are wide. Um, so which was uh, initially developed by the AI community and uh, computer science community. Now, a lot of business analytics um, applications are based on these AI approaches, okay? So throughout the NBAM program and also my own course, we tried to, I've tried to introduce some, um, some AI applications in analytics. So um, I want to introduce um, some of uh, my own. So Natalie mentioned that I'm, I'm a, a director of um, analytics, the data analytics and AI research lab. So I want to introduce some of our, our research project. So in the MBAM program uh, at the end, you will have the opportunity of analytics, uh, the internship project, okay? So, um, so sometimes you will have the opportunity to work with the industry um, uh, and also sometimes you will have a chance to work with the, the uh, academic professors here. So I want to give you some taste of different analytics and AI uh, projects. Um, so this was a pro this is a project I work on where Yahoo, Yahoo here, um, they back in they they acquired a, a blogging site called Tumblr. Um, so Tumblr uh, in Tumblr, uh, a lot of brands were using Tumblr as a, as a social media platform 
to communicate with their customers, to, to promote their products, et cetera. So um, this was around um, like a little bit, like around 2015-ish, 2015-ish. So when um, deep learning algorithm was introduced. So um, deep learning algorithm is a special, uh, special kinds of uh, AI and machine learning where you can uh, understand unstructured data such as images here. So from the images, you can understand how beautiful the aesthetic level, so object detection, so what kinds of objects are in the, in the image, or is it an adult content, or do we have celebrity inside? So we can do a lot of this image analysis. Not only that, you can also understand the text inside. So there are textual description of the posts, the tags, right? So you can use text mining. And then uh, at the end, also you can combine the text and image information together to understand the similarity between those two. So why, why, why are we doing all this uh, image and text analysis, which is to really understand cons consumer engagement here. So once you, um, so the brands, they want to optimize their, they have to maximize their reach, right? So they, for, uh, very simply, um, you want to get more likes, you want this post to be shared in the social network, right? Um, so what we did in this project is to predict the number of likes and shares just by looking at the image and text. So even without deploying this post to the, to the public, you can kind of predict how many people will like this one. Just, and then you can tweak your image and text a little bit to maximize your reach. So this was a very um, successful project. Uh, and actually we can, you can predict up to 85% if this post will be popular or not. Um, another project I'm working with on um, is on video. So if you go to, if you're watching YouTube um, or other uh, video platform, sometimes you will see um, when you really are eager, eager to see this content, then uh, some ads shows up in front of you, right? So, and you can, after five seconds, you can skip this one, right? So I, I'm, for this project, I'm working with it, this online video platform where they target these video ads in front of the content. So the question is, how can we optimize the ad placement so that the ads will be not so annoying to people and also more engaging to the people? So basically, so the question is, can you predict if this user will skip this ad if they want about to watch this content? So this is predictive analytics. Um, again, you can use um, image analysis, but uh, compared to image, um, the social media image and the video, uh, there's a very interesting difference, uh, which is the image is just a still image. So it's just static image. However, if you think about the videos, it's changing over time. So it's not just one image, it's a sequence of image that gives you much more rich context. So we use here uh, video analytics techniques. So um, we try to understand the scene, uh, how complex the video is, the, the scenes are, and the sequence of scenes. So you can do video analytics. Another unique aspect of video is that it has the audio. So now you're listening to this um, lecture in Zoom, right? So you're listening to my voice. Uh, it turns out the audio information is very important in these video platforms. Um, so you, we do speech recognition. We can also do audio analysis. So also music analysis, try to understand these audio features. And so using the vis visual, the audio, and also, also the theme of the video, et cetera, also user profiling, you can make a very accurate prediction. So you can also uh, uh, predict up to 90% chance, 90% uh, uh, if this person will skip or not. That's, you can make a very accurate prediction. So that's a predictive analytics, right? So once you can predict, so the, the, the next thing you will do is to prescribe, right? So how we will target the ads based on this information, prescriptive analytics. Okay, um, for the remaining um, a few minutes, I want to um, talk about uh, what you will learn in our MBAM program. And more specifically, I will talk about uh, my own course uh, that you will be taking if you, uh, if you can join us. Okay, so Harvard, in, uh, this is a Harvard Business School uh, article. Uh, the title is Analytics Essential Skills. So if you go to the industry, when people think about the business analytics uh, expert, what do they think about? So they first talk about the core skill. 
which is to be communicating with data and visualization. So in our MBAM program, uh, we have a data visualization course where you will learn uh, these tools such as Tableau or Power BI uh, to try to visualize your data. Um, not just visualization, you need to tell a story out of this. So, um, which is a very, um, very unique skill set. I, I know there are many people who can do very good technology, do programming, but sometimes they're not really good when, they're, uh, when they communicate using those data. There are people who have very good communication skill set, okay? But if they do, if uh, their argument is not based on data or visualization, it's not so persuasive. So having these two components together, I think it's a very unique uh, aspect you can achieve in this MBAN program. Also, you will have a lot of chance to do problem solving and critical thinking. So as Natalie mentioned before, so for example, for instance, we will have um, analytics competition, uh, data, co data science competition, where uh, the companies will bring their data sets and then you will solve those questions, their question using analytic, your, the analytic skills you learn in the MBAN program. So this will give you a chance to problem solve and do critical thinker. Okay, okay. Um, to do all this data analytic and analytics, um, so you need to you need to have technical skill set, uh, which is the the reality we're facing now. So in my course, I'm teaching you Python uh, and its ecosystem, for such as for data uh, manipulation, data visualization, a little text mining. In my course, there are other courses that you will learn R programming. So R is strong, it's a good language for statistical analysis or economic, e economical analysis. So you will use both Python and R throughout this uh, MBAM program. Also, you will learn database using SQL language. So a lot of structured data in the, in this, in the corporates are based on this SQL database. So you will use SQL queries to crawl the data, um, to, to uh, manipulate your data, get insight out of it. Finally, so you will use also Tableau in one of the course. So we provide you a, a spectrum of skill sets in our MBAM program, which is I think very unique uh, compared to our um, other peer uh, programs, which they focus on very specific technologies. But in our MBAM program, uh, we give you a broader perspective. So uh, just giving you about Python. So Python, so I, 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 I think maybe uh, some of you may feel intimidated when you think about programming. Um, so, uh, and I agree, I mean, understand, uh, learning a new language, such as learning foreign language is, is a challenging task. If you want to speak the data, data analytics, business analytics language, you need to use programming language. Um, the good news is that, um, there are many programming languages now, which is very easy to learn. It's very readable compared to the traditional other languages like such C++ or Java. Um, I have used, I think, at least 20 different programming languages in my career, and I can confidently say the Python and R programming, uh, you can use, you can learn it, um, even though you don't have much background. Uh, of course, you need to put effort. <laughs> so you may be wondering, um, so why Python is so popular these days? So uh, first, I want to show you some stats here, data-driven here. So why is the, uh, the year, right? So if you know Google Trends, Google, uh, Google Trends provides you the search volume of different keywords over time. So they have, th in this chart, they're showing you the tutorial search volume in Google, at Google. So the black line, uh, uh, and one more thing is that the Y axis is in the exponential scale. So if you see a linear decrease, that means it's exponentially decreasing. If it's increasing linearly, that means exponentially increasing. So, Java used to be the number one for many years, decades. And what, what I also learned in my undergrad and master's program, uh, but you can see the Python, uh, the dotted uh, purple line is exponentially increasing. If you search now, Python is the number one language in, in the world. And so you may wonder why this is happening, why Python is so popular. So um, people uh, talk about network effect, network effect. So the network effect goes like this. So this language is pretty easy to learn. It's, it's almost like English actually. So because it's easy to learn, you have a large user base, okay? Even non-technical background people can easily learn Python to do their uh, to daily jobs. So because you have a large community of programmers, the developers are adding more features to it. 
Okay, so making the programming language even richer. And because of the richer uh, capability, it, it uh, attracts more people. So there's this virtual cycle. Better tool, more people using it, so they cycle. So um, many of the Python and R uh, analytics toolkits are not actually from Python or R people. This is an open platform, so where any developer, third-party developer can contribute. So we will be using a lot of uh, analytics data, data science libraries, such as Matplotlib, Pandas, Scikit-learn, uh, text blob, you, may, you name it, NLTK. So these libraries are mostly open source libraries and you have a very strong tool uh, at your fingertip, okay? Uh, and the big data and also big money. So Python, if you have Python skill set, R skill set, um, your, your salary can increase substantially. All right, so um, my own specific course, uh, it's called BAIT 508. Uh, it's business analytics programming. So through this course, you will have working knowledge on Python programming. So um, we will provide you some uh, pre-course materials if you get admitted to our program so that you can prepare yourself even before the class, okay? So throughout the core class, we will, uh, we will cover the basics and the uh, intermediate aspect of Python programming. We will also understand data science concepts and Python's ecosystem, okay? And uh, for the final project, you will have hands-on analytics practice uh, using Twitter API to collect data. So you will pick your topic your interest and then you'll collect data. You will process those uh, Twitter data and to do social media analysis. So the, down below these visualizations are from some of my uh, former students uh, who have conducted uh, Twitter social media analysis. So I believe uh, when you join this um, and then you'll have some fun time uh, during this project. As Natalie mentioned before, so many, most of our, uh, of our courses are first, uh, we, we teach you some, um, some concepts and techniques, but at the end, so you'll use some hands-on, um, your, your hands-on skill set to understand real world data. So this was, this is a, one of the uh, strengths of our MBAM program. So, um, so that was it for my, um, sample lecture. Um, so I'll, I'll stop here. I'll be happy to um, get any questions. Wonderful. Thank you so much for that uh, informative lecture, uh, Professor Jean Lee. Thank you. And now we'd love to open things up to if you have any questions for, for the professor on his lecture or anything related to BI or um, business and intelligence or um, his topic of of discussion, please uh, feel free to ask away. You can either type your questions in the chat panel or feel free to use your um, the raise hand feature and um, you can ask that way as well. So this is a, prof uh, I have a question for you over here, um, Professor. So um, how would your project assignments work? How do you administer them? And are they independent projects or are they, are they team projects? Can you speak mm -hmm. a little bit to your Sure. Um, assignment there. Mm -hmm. um, so there are some initial um, um, individual assignments, uh, which is really to um, get hands-on experience on Python yourself. At the end of this course, we have a group project. Um, so for my own course, I ask you to self um, self form your team, so get to know your teammates, um, and then so it will be about uh, two to three people per project. Um, because uh, the, this, this specific project is on social media, so you want to have some mutual interest on certain topics. So you get together and then you will collect data and analysis. Uh, for other courses, I know that sometimes uh, the professor will assign you to different groups. Thank you for that. And we have another question here about, some, it, it, it's from somebody who has a strong business background. And it seems like they don't have as much programming or technical experience. Mm -hmm. Um, what would you advise to them mm. as they're looking to potentially apply for the course? What what could they do, or what do you recommend that they do, knowing what you know about the program? Yeah, thanks. Uh, that's a great question. In fact, so as I mentioned throughout the uh, in the lecture, I know some people feel intimidated of these technical subjects, uh, which I totally understand. Um, so from from our uh, the point of view, we provide some pre course materials uh, to the students. So it's not just programming, but if you are if you want to get some more math or statistics or other uh, subjects, we provide you pre-course materials. Uh, so I think throughout the summer, 
uh, you can prepare yourself uh, those things you, you think you need more time. So we provide you those resources. Um, and also another um, thing is when you learn these technical subjects, um, it's not really fun to just go over lectures and follow them. Uh, think about a project, uh, something you, you are interested in and try to uh, do those projects using these skill sets to go the other way around. You first have something you want to achieve and then work backward. So that that's that way you get more motivation. It's it's even fun, more fun to do that way. Yeah, that's my suggestion. Thank you for that. And we have a, a question here about the format of the courses. I think a lot mm -hmm. of people got used to the whole online uh, teaching uh, during the, the COVID um, era. Uh, mm -hmm. Can you speak a little bit to your to your mode of delivery at this time? Sure. Yeah. So. Um, I, I would say 100% of the lectures are now in person. Um, so uh, unless there's like heavy snow, the uh, last week there was a heavy snow. <laughs> because of that, we had to switch like very temporarily for Zoom. Um, so majority of the lectures will be in in uh, in person for sure. Uh, but we will also leverage online. Uh, for, for instance, you may have want to have some uh, TA office hours, extended office hours. We do provide office hours in person and but also virtual. So that let, let's say you don't want to commute one day, but you still want to meet with the TA and professor. And then we can have some like be, this virtual meeting, but uh, the, the course itself, lecture itself will be mostly in person. Thank you for that. Um, and alluding to the snow, here in Vancouver, we don't get very much snow. So when we do, the city kind of uh, takes a little bit of a pause. And uh, so that's that speaks to, to why we transitioned to the online uh, programming um, a, a day last week. Mm -hmm. um, we have a question here uh, from somebody um, uh, that's, that reads, what types of recommendations are considered persuasive, analytics related, or ones that are from a professor with faith? <laughs> yeah, that's a great question. Um, so there is this Technical term, I mean, not technical term, but it's a, it's a funny term called HIPPO, um, the, the opinion of the high, highest paid income person. <laughs> so <laughs> I can, I can, uh, I think that's like Professor Wood fame. So, um, so I think you need to have, I mean, I, to be honest, you need to have both. You need to have the credibility credentials to really uh, back your data. So because in data analysis, you, there's so many ways you can, it can go wrong when you analyze the data. So there's some cred credibility aspect to it. So to show that uh, your team can deliver. Uh, but having said that, once you have the credibility, I would say that um, nowadays the industry is leading, leading towards more data-driven. So, um, so many of the actually um, decisions are based on data, not based on a uh, gut feeling. So I would say, yeah, data speaks. <laughs> Thank you. So you have another question here um, that reads, one side of data science is statistics. How much is a prior understanding of math and stats needed? And there's an, also another question about the level of programming needed for someone who would want to pursue the entrepreneurial path. Mm, okay, so these are this is a two parts question, right? Two-part question. So essentially, sorry, well, let's break that up in two. So the sure. first question is how much um, prior understanding of math and stats would mm. be needed for the course? So for my course, actually, you, you need very little math, uh, to be honest. Um, but there are other MBAM courses, such as uh, this is making it with uh, under uncertainty, which is basically a probability and statistic class. So it's good to have some prior knowledge. Uh, it, I mean, I would say it's a it's an optional still, but um, again, in the during, in the summer time, we provide all the pre course materials. So if you if you think that you're lacking statistics, for for instance, we provide you the uh, resource for that. Um, so that's the, for the computer science background. <laughs> you don't need any computer science background. I can say, <laughs> yeah. So Python programming is a pretty easy to learn language. Um, even my my uh, sixth six, uh, 
grade six daughter is learning Python nowadays. <laughs> so you don't need like uh, rocket science background to do this. Uh, but but you need to have your um, your effort and motivation to put forward. Yeah, but uh, not not like yeah computer science background. Thank you for that. And how would you, how valuable would you say is um, having a background in analytics for someone who wants to pursue the entrepreneurial route? Entrepreneur, yeah, that's a great question. Um, in fact, so in so maybe I can give you a broader picture of solder. <laughs> is that okay? So we have MBAM program, which we provide you technical skill sets and business background. We also have MBA program. In there, we have technology analytics career track. Um, so which is tailored toward more um, the entrepreneurial aspect. So I think uh, many of the entrepreneurs are based on analytics. They Their background is analytics. So, um, and then when they make decision, um, they use what's called lean startup method, which is to experiment and tweak your product. So in that sense, analytics background give you a good edge in entrepreneurship. At UBC, we have a lot of uh, entrepreneurship programs such as E at UBC, at Solder School, we have uh, Creative Destruction Lab West, which is re really um, helping you, helping um, the venture, uh, so the entrepreneurs who want to pursue their dream. Yeah, so we have resources for that too. And we have a question here. It's a good one, but it, it, it might take a while to answer. So you might have to give us the the Coles notes or the Spark notes answer to this question. Okay. Um, in your experience and in your op opinion, Gene, what would you say is the key difference between business analytics, data analytics, and data science? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's a tricky question. It's an it's a it's an uh, open actually question nowadays. Um, I would say, I mean, in my opinion, so the business analytics is data science in business. That's my definition. And um, people have, may have different opinion. So, data science analytics is really the the way of thinking. Um, the way to process information. So in that sense, they have some commonality, but data science can be used in other applications such as healthcare, uh, such as um, like um, environment. So this is a way of using these tools and technology uh, and data to uh, achieve certain goals. So in that sense, there's a big intersection. In fact, um, a few weeks ago, there were, we have some alumni events at, uh, here at, uh, at Solder. So a lot of MBAM graduates came and then some of them were actually working as uh, data scientists. Um, so in that sense, there's a big intersection, uh, but some of our MBAM uh, students also become technical consultants, which is more tailored toward the strategy side. So I can see a uh, spectrum. Um, yeah, <laughs> I don't know if that's a satisfactory answer or not. <laughs> that was great, thank you. And if I, if I have something to add, it would just be that also, organizations and companies might have a different job description for, for that title. So what one um, organization might call a business analyst, another organization might call a data scientist. So that's why it's important to focus more sometimes on the, on the job description than the, um, than the, the, than the title, because mm -hmm. uh, these days you're finding all types of uh, creative uh, job titles for, for, for different roles. And mm -hmm. um, so we're seeing that. But yeah, definitely, uh, I think that's how I would um, describe it. I mean, I would say business analytics really is that intersection between the world of data science and business. Mm -hmm. So it looks like we're getting some, some more specific questions as well on um, admissions related that are pertaining to the MBA and our potential track within the MBA, which is called our technology and analytics track. And definitely what I would comment on that would be that if you're interested in the entrepreneurial route or to be promoted within your role as a, as a manager or a director or being in a C-level suite, and you want to do that in technology under a business analytics lens, um, the the MBA uh, would be a, a, probably a great path for you with that specialization track in the technology and analytics leadership. You're not getting as much in the um, technical leads as you would be in the, in the master's in business analytics. So if you're deciding between an MBA and a master's in business analytics, 
I guess the first question I would get you to ask yourself is, what role do you want to play in an organization? Are you driven to lead large teams, lead large projects? If that's the case for you, then considering an MBA might be the right path. But if you're more interested in helping helping and supporting organizations solve data-driven problems and be more on the data side of things, rolling your sleeves up and being part of the problem-solving aspect of things, a master's in business analytics might be uh, a better path and it, uh, for you to consider and explore. So thank you all so much for joining us today. We really appreciate your attendance and your time today. And again, a sincere uh, thank you to Professor Gene Lee for being with us today, sharing his insights, his knowledge, and, and giving a snippet as to what it might be like to ex experience one of his lectures, uh, a true treat today for all of us. So thanks again. Thank you for everyone for logging in. Uh, we hope to see you at the next best time. And in the meantime, if you have any questions related to your application and our deadlines, please feel free to get in touch with our recruitment and admissions team. For all things Masters in Business Analytics, you can be with, in touch with myself directly or contact the general Sauter email, mban at sauter.ubc.ca. Thank you, everyone, and have a wonderful day. Bye now.